Oh doggy, we've got something special here. Oh my gosh! You might actually remember this enclosure was actually upstairs and believe it or not, salt was actually in this and we actually ended up replacing them with these enclosures here, which are exact same size, but they have the doors that open up. That way we could access from the front with salt and pepper in here. It's hard to believe that salt and pepper ever even fit in these enclosures. Thankfully, I'm gonna be able to use these enclosures for what we just got, but before I do that, I actually have to build some stands for them so that we can put the filtration and stuff like that under. So off to Home Depot we go. Okay, so back from Home Depot, got all the wood together. I'm gonna to be totally honest with you, this is all kind of being made as I go here. I don't have a real good plan, but I want these to be two feet off the ground. There's gonna be one on this side of the couch, and there's gonna be one on that side of the couch, and then we can actually show you what is actually gonna go into them. So let's just go ahead and put the Brian the Builder hat on, and let's build some stands. And as always, I'm just kind of winging it. I don't really have a plan written down, but I've got one in my head, so let's see how this turns out. I always say that it's not important how the stand or anything looks behind, it's what it looks like afterwards, right? So what you want is strength, right? So essentially this is the stabilization that's gonna hold the tank up. You figure 75 gallons of water is a lot of weight, so you can't just like have two by fours nailed together. You have to have supports that are gonna support all the weight, and then we can go back and do a cool facade on it. So this should work out good as far as the stability so that it holds the tank level and all that stuff, and then we just have to make it look pretty. And by looking pretty, basically what I'm gonna do is put these pine boards on it and then ultimately stain them so that it actually looks like a professional finish or at least a cooler finish. And I want it to kind of match the decor of the basement. So already it's starting to look pretty cool. All right, so as you can see, we have a cabinet that's gonna look pretty good. Now we just have to sand everything up, stain it so that it looks really awesome, matches all the decor down here, put the last hardware on, and hey, that's just one sand down, one to go. And it's all these finishing touches that really make things come to life. We wanna stain this to where it's basically gonna fit in with the color pattern of the entire thing. We're trying to decide, do we want it to blend in or do we want it to contrast? In this case, we want it to kind of blend in, and we want a little bit of a distressed look so it looks like it's a little bit old. So it's turning out really good, and again, it's amazing how just a concept in my head is starting to come to life. All right, now that they all look good as far as the coloring goes, stain goes, all I have to do is put the knobs on and then we can put the tank on and start to see what this thing turns out to look like. All right, so the tank is on. So this is basically what it's gonna end up looking like. Obviously, we've gotta clean it up and stuff like that, but uh, this is gonna be on this side. They'll have another one on that side, get all these tools out of here, and this room is gonna look really cool. Cannot wait to get this finished up. For now, we actually have to go and get the filter, which is a fluval canister filter. So let's get that and put it under here and see what else we need. We're using the Fluver XX4, which is the same exact filters that we use on chopsticks and all the other ones over on the other side. So we've got all the stuff that we need here. It's, all, it's just a really good canister filter. It filters under here real good. So this will go under here, but of course what we need is intake and outtake that go to this enclosure here. So what we have to do is actually head over to my buddy Steve over at Bashy Aquatics and get some bulkheads and some other materials. So what do you say? We head over there before we fill this sucker up, clean it up, and then we can unbox those awesome animals. So obviously at my buddy Steve's place, uh, he looks like he's busy with a lot of things here. Uh, yeah. Pretty crazy, <laughs> yeah, he's upset at me. So he's got the parts for the filtration that we need. So uh, let's see what you're gonna do. This place is crazy, I mean, look at this place. These are all life support and just absolutely insane. Think what you kind of asked for. Yes. You gotta glue some of it, you gotta Teflon tape some of it. And right. I think so from what your description is, I think I'm somewhat right or close. Right, so this is the bulkhead 
for the Yeah, you this said set. two tanks, two bulkheads, yep. right? Right. So and then I think I only need one, two of these. Gotcha. So the, because I've got oh, the, the other one is the return. Yeah, the return. Gotcha. Yep, yep. And then you don't got to yell, by the way. <laughs> So I don't know if I need, what is this for? Well, this is for t underneath, because I don't know how you're attaching this stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what I need. Shh, you know what you're doing, man. You're so smart. <laughs> the only other time. thing that I think is, do you have longer tubes than this or no? I, I cut these because I wouldn't, I thought, I didn't even think you needed these. Just remember, I asked yeah, you what I, comes I, with the hose. I think it comes with this hose that like, like is corrugated. Yes, that's what it comes with. Yeah. So you can't use that at all. I, I think I threw it away. Got you, really? <laughs> how do you connect to the fluval without that? Uh, 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 this. This oh, goes... Because wow. I don't have much of that at all. Six and a half hours later. After some deliberation, I think we've got it figured out. I hope that we have the hosing we need, but if we don't, we'll get that figured out too. I'm not worried about it, but this is what we need for the bulkhead. So let's head back to the shop and actually see if we can put this filter together. I really wanted these tanks to look great. I want them to just be popping when you come downstairs. And again, this is gonna be the VIP podcast room as well. So we ended up buying some really cool lights that are really futuristic. They've got UVB, they're just amazing. You can actually set sunset, sunrise, you can set thunderstorm, all kinds of different stuff. So we're just putting those together, putting it on top, because this is gonna make this tanks look absolutely amazing. So I have all of the filters hooked up now. I've got everything set here. I just have to clean up the tanks, get some gravel in there, then we can actually fill up water, uh, let that run for a little bit before our little monkeys get back in there. So let's just go ahead and clean some rocks up and get the pebbles in here and fill it up with water and pray for no leaks. Not gonna lie, I enjoyed this entire project, except for cleaning these rocks out. I'm telling you what, these rocks were dirty and it hurt to swish them around and it took a long time to get all the dirt out of the pebbles, but you have to get that dirt out of there so that the tanks actually are clean and don't have any debris in there. So, uh, well, I tell you what, this is the one part of the project I didn't like and I am sure glad that is over. Now the fun part, get to fill these guys up, make sure that the filter's working, no leaks, all that other stuff, and we're one step closer. We'll get the heater in here, and uh, we'll let these run for a while. Uh, I hope that everything goes well, fingers crossed. <laughs> so first tank is full. Uh, so far, no leaks down here. I did have the hose pop out a couple times and got water all over the floor, but uh, the actual filter is working, everything looks good. We'll let this clear up and stuff like that, and we'll move on to tank number two. Tanks are filled up with water, the filters are running, it looks like it's absolutely incredible. So it is time to put the turtles in, or is it? The truth is, we actually set those tanks up a few days ago, and now today we actually have to head to FedEx to actually go pick up the actual animals herself, so we can actually unbox them. And that way the water is conditioned, all the chlorine is out and stuff like that. We also set up heaters in there, they need to be about 82 degrees. So what do you say we head over to FedEx? And I picked up salt and pepper. Oh, that's awesome. You gotta watch it on YouTube over here. It is fun to watch. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right, Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Alright guys, we are finally back from FedEx and I can show you what these are and they are absolutely ridiculous. I am so excited. Take a look at the first one right here. Oh, holy crap! 
This has been a dream animal of mine forever. These guys are, of course, the fly river turtles, sometimes called the pig nose turtles. They're actually native to northern Australia and New Guinea. And I had the pleasure of one day swimming with these guys in northern Australia. And ever since, I've been absolutely blown away. And I've always wanted, I, literally, one of the top animals I've ever wanted is these guys here, fly river turtles. They're almost like a sea turtle with fresh water, essentially. They can get up to 24 inches. These guys are about, you know, maybe eight to 10 inches or so. Absolutely incredible. The thing that's great about that, they're very social. So when we actually open up the expansion, we can have these guys on exhibit and they'll come up for pets. You can actually feed them like little grapes. They eat fruits and vegetables, as well as like commercial like trout chow or turtle chow and stuff like that. So they do need some protein, but they will actually eat vegetables, apple slices, pear slices, stuff like that right out of your hand. This is incredible. This one is absolutely gorgeous. Let's look at the other one. And this is the second one here. It's a little bit darker than the other ones, but the truth is, is that as they get older, they really darken up anyways, and they get almost brown when they're adults. But oh my gosh, these guys are absolutely incredible. I am so excited to have these guys. So I tell you, it's a dream come true, guys. I mean, I've opened up a lot of things on this log and a lot of things that I've been super excited about. I honestly, this is top five animals I've ever gotten. So we have a couple of these little monkeys. They're gonna go into the aquariums that we already set up a few days ago that are conditioned, ready to go. What do you say we head downstairs and go ahead and release these guys? Now, keeping in mind, they're eventually gonna be in a giant enclosure that's gonna be open for the public. But for now, we wanna make sure that they're actually not stressed out alone and stuff like that. So for the next few months, at least, we'll be quarantining them and really working with these guys because these guys can stress out pretty quickly. But these are definitely beautiful. Look at that. Let's go ahead and let him go. This guy's got a little bit of scrape on his back from the shipping. That'll heal up really good. We'll keep a really good eye on it. And keep in mind, these enclosures here, which I'm gonna put him in and just let him swim a little bit. There you go. These enclosures are just temporary, right? They're not gonna stay in here forever, obviously. But for the next few months, we're gonna let them kind of just settle in. We'll be able to keep a close eye on them. Like I said, that little bit of a, you know, kind of rub that happened during shipping, that should cure up. We'll go ahead and we'll put some medicine on it if we need to and stuff like that. I'll have my vet take a look at it, make sure everything's good, but I think we're 100% good. Look at this. Are you kidding me right now? Oh my gosh. That is the most ridiculous thing in the world. He is just, oh my gosh. Ah. Oh. I absolutely love this. I mean, this is like a dream come true. I'm gonna sit down here and just look at these guys all day. Let's put the other one in. And of course, this one looks almost like a hypo, but the truth is, is it'll darken up as it gets older. There you go, buddy. Oh my God. And they just seem to be in there again. These have been set up now for the last few days, so the water is perfectly conditioned. We've got heaters in here that are set at 82 degrees. And again, we'll go ahead and let these guys settle in for the day. Maybe even later on, we'll try to feed them. Hopefully, they'll settle in to get some food. And uh, uh, wow, this is just absolutely incredible. I mean, look at that, guys. I mean, this is truly a dream come true. I mean, I hope that you guys enjoyed this whole journey of you know making the enclosures, setting them up, going to get them, setting them in here. Let me know. We need names for these two little monkeys, too. They are unbelievably cute. I love them. I'm just brimming with excitement right now. If you like this video and you like unboxing stuff, here's a playlist of a bunch of unboxing stuff right there. On this side, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that subscription button. Uh, I'm just so excited. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.